Think about the last time you had a disagreement with a friend or a family member. Remember that uncomfortable tension in the air afterwards, the awkward silence? We have a whole range of complex ways to fix these situations, from talking it out to a simple apology. But what happens in the animal kingdom? Imagine a fight erupts in a monkey troop over a piece of fruit. It is a flurry of noise and teeth, but then it is over. What happens next? Do they hold a grudge forever? Or do these intelligent primates have their own ancient ways of making peace of saying, I am sorry, before we dive into the fascinating world of primate politics. If you love uncovering the secrets of the monkey mind, please subscribe to our channel, Monkey Low, and remember to like and share this video. Your support is what allows us to bring these incredible stories to you. Now, let's explore the complex art of monkey conflict resolution. First, we need to understand why monkeys fight. Just like us, their conflicts often revolve around three key things, resources, relationships, and rank. A dispute might break out over a prized piece of fruit, access to a mate, or a challenge to an individual's position in the troop's strict social hierarchy. These fights can be loud, fast, and look quite vicious, involving chasing, biting, and aggressive displays. But then, as quickly as it started, it is over. And this is where the real drama begins. An uncomfortable tension falls over the group. The two opponents will avoid each other, and the other monkeys in the troop will often act nervously around them. This is a big problem. Unlike humans, monkeys cannot just go home to cool off. They live together, travel together, and depend on each other for survival. An unresolved conflict is a weakness. It can disrupt group cooperation, which is essential for finding food and defending against predators. A troop that is busy fighting amongst itself is a troop that is vulnerable. So restoring harmony is not just a nice idea, it is a matter of life and death. The very first step to resolving the conflict is to clearly establish that the fight is over. This is the job of the loser. The lower-ranking individual must signal its surrender to the winner. It does this through a series of submission gestures. It might crouch down to make itself look smaller, avoid eye contact, or make a specific high-pitched vocalization that signals fear. In some species, like baboons, a subordinate will famously present its hindquarters to the dominant individual. This is the ultimate sign of deference, a clear message that says, you are the boss, I accept my position, the fight is finished. The dominant animal, in turn, must accept this surrender. If it continues to attack a subordinate who is clearly signaling submission, it can destabilize the entire group and create unnecessary chaos. The winner's choice to stop is the first crucial step back towards peace, but is simply ending the fight the same as making up. For a long time, scientists thought that was the end of it. But then, they started noticing something incredible. In the minutes and hours after a fight, the two former opponents would often seek each other out. This is not about starting round two. This is about reconciliation. The most common and most powerful form of reconciliation in the primate world is grooming. One of the monkeys, often the one who started the fight, will cautiously approach its former rival, sit down, and begin to gently and meticulously pick through its fur. This is the primate equivalent of an olive branch, a handshake, and a heartfelt apology all rolled into one. It is an act that is loaded with social meaning. But why is grooming so effective? It is not just about getting clean. The physical act of being groomed is incredibly calming for a monkey. It lowers the heart rate and releases feel-good hormones in the brain, like endorphins and oxytocin. These are the same chemicals involved in human bonding and friendship. Grooming literally reduces the stress and anxiety that linger after a conflict. It is a biological reset button, washing away the tension and replacing it with a feeling of trust and contentment. While grooming is the most common method, monkeys have other ways of making up. Depending on the species, reconciliation can involve a gentle embrace, a kiss on the mouth or face, holding hands, or even the winner sharing a piece of food with the loser. This brings us to a much deeper question. 
When a monkey offers that grooming hand, is it feeling remorse? Does it feel guilty for its aggressive actions? This is the ultimate mystery, because we can never truly know what an animal is feeling or thinking. We cannot prove an emotion like guilt in the human sense. But we can observe their behavior, and their behavior gives us some powerful clues. One of the most fascinating discoveries is that in many primate species, it is the aggressor, the winner of the fight, who makes the first move to reconcile. Think about that for a moment. If reconciliation were just about the victim seeking comfort, we would expect the loser of the fight to be the one to approach for grooming. But very often, it is the dominant animal that initiates the makeup session. This strongly suggests that the aggressor is motivated to repair the social bond that it just damaged. Why would a winner care about the loser's feelings? Because in a complex primate society, every relationship has value. Today's opponent might be a crucial ally in tomorrow's fight against a different rival. It might be a reliable grooming partner who helps keep you free of parasites. Burning bridges is a bad long-term strategy. The winner has an incentive to apologize, to ensure the relationship remains functional for the future. They are practicing what scientists call relationship repair. Conflict in a monkey troop does not happen in a bubble. The tension after a fight affects everyone, and the whole community has a stake in restoring peace. In some species, other monkeys will actually get involved. A high-ranking neutral monkey, often an older female, might act as a mediator. She might approach the two squabbling individuals and groom one, then turn and groom the other, acting as a social bridge between them until they are calm enough to interact peacefully on their own. The rest of the troop can also exert a kind of social pressure, refusing to interact with the aggressor until it makes peace with its victim. Everyone wants the harmony of the group to be restored. Different species have their own unique styles of saying sorry. The highly intelligent capuchin monkeys of South America have some truly strange reconciliation behaviors. They will sometimes stick their fingers in each other's mouths or even put their entire hand in. This is an act of incredible vulnerability and trust, and it seems to be a very effective way of diffusing tension. The bonobos of Central Africa, who are great apes, are famous for resolving almost all conflicts with physical affection, including various forms of sexual behavior. Their entire society is built around the idea of reconciliation through pleasure. But not all monkeys are so quick to make up. In species with less complex social lives, or where alliances are less important, the most common strategy might simply be avoidance. The two opponents will just stay on opposite sides of the troop until they forget they were ever fighting. So, when we look at the whole picture, it is clear that monkeys have a sophisticated and varied toolkit for managing their social relationships. Their process of conflict resolution begins with clear dominance and submission signals to end the violence. From there, it often moves to a deliberate act of reconciliation, a way of mending the social fabric. And while we can never say for sure that they feel remorse or forgiveness in the same way we do, their actions demonstrate a clear and powerful understanding that their relationships are valuable and worth repairing. Their ability to make peace is not just a sign of their intelligence. It is a fundamental key to their collective survival. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the complex politics of the primate world, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It helps us continue to grow and allows us to bring more of these amazing stories to you. We also want to know what you are curious about. What monkey topic should we investigate next? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one.